Hello there everyone, and welcome back to another one of my uniform videos. So, I noticed that two of my YouTube shorts were outperforming the other ones, and both of them were concerning my Swedish Model 1910 uniform. So, I thought I'd go ahead and take a look at that and make a longer uniform video explaining and showing off some of the stuff I have. So, with that said, let's get straight into it, shall we? So, we're out here in this nice spring weather and I've got uh, most of the gear right here behind me and as per the questions that were most asked. Everyone, of course, wanted to know about the bread bag. No, I'm joking. Obviously, all the comments were in fact about why did Sweden wear a tricorn hat during the during World War One. Now to start off, there were quite a few jokes made about Sweden still wearing the tricorn hat during the World War I period, when in fact that was not the case. It was reintroduced. Sweden throughout its uh, military history followed the same kind of fashion when it comes to uniforms and headgear as the rest of the European nations, as we can see with the pictures below. Similar to why the French held on to the red pants and why the Germans had spiked helmets. It's more of a statement, it's more of a um, aesthetic than anything else. And whilst Sweden hadn't accomplished anything military for quite a while, when we actually were quite a bit of a fighting power, we were still wearing these. So we're talking about the Great Northern War, of course, and the Karelians. So it was a call back to that period to draw upon the sort of make Sweden great again uh, type of deal where um, we were looking back in time to a period where we were a great military power. Right, let's go ahead and take a closer look, shall we? So, first and foremost, it's important to say that this is a replica hat, because I have not been able to find one in size 60, which is a rather large size. The closest I've found is 58, and that would sit rather tight on my head. So I had this hat made for me, um, and as we look at it, it is a tricorn. It's got three sides. It's a uh, rather small tricorn. It's not uh, similar to the sort of uh, back in the 1700s where they had the, the brims and so on were much larger. This is a rather small one. We've got grey felt on the inside with blue on the outside. Uh, we've got a plume right here, blue and yellow, the um, Swedish national colours. Now this would only be worn on parade, so this would not be worn out in the field bright colors to signal where you are and then we've got the three crowns yeah. every detail of the original items have the three crowns stamped on it it's an old national sister uh, symbol of Sweden um, in terms of where it comes from you could be forgiven to think that it was the Trinity but as far as I know there's no actual like definitive proof to say that it's derived from uh, Christian, uh, sort of the Trinity, the Holy Father, the, and so on. Um, and then a last bit here, which is missing, which I haven't put on yet, is the company uh, marker. So you would have uh, between a one or an eight, because uh, the Swedish regiments had about eight companies. So if you were in company one, you would have a one, a two and three and so on, um, right underneath the crowns here. Then there's also, I didn't bring it, but there's a strap which you can uh, fasten in here. So go around here 
uh, to keep it in place. This one fits rather nicely on my head, so I'm not too... Uh, and also I'm not really doing much to uh, have it come loose. And there we have the uh, sort of a breakdown of the hat. <laughs> Something close to um, about a 33 centiliter can or so, maybe a little bit more. But it does not contain a lot and I don't know what they were thinking making it out of glass. Now it's pretty darn thick glass, but still it's glass and as I said it doesn't contain a lot of, uh, it doesn't contain a lot of water. So you would need to have some more refilling quite a, quite a bit. Uh, this one's a little bit broken. Uh, I don't know if you can see, not important, but it still seals as I screw it the top back on and turn it upside down. And there we have uh, the water bottle. These also can be found in uh, being brown instead of green. But this is the one I've got. <laughs> Next up we have the backpack which contains these three items obviously the backpack itself uh, then we got for the food rations so where we can eat out of and cook out of and we have a shovel to dig down so hopefully it'd be a lot harder for the enemy to shoot us down and also the thing about it is uh, army work is about 5% shooting 95% digging so a shovel is uh, very important. Um, pretty nice one, it's got a nice handle up here. Also you note the markings here, it's actually marked with which regiment this was issued to. So it's the infantry regiment number 12, which if I'm not mistaken is sort of down in the south. If I remember correctly, I-12 is in Kalmar, um, I think. I'm going, to, I'm going to correct myself in, in edit. Uh, then the backpack. Oh, yeah, I should say, if I didn't say, these are all original items, as you might tell from the markings on the back of the backpack here. So we've got markings for Regiment I-16. And then when it was made, 1913. Not entirely sure about this one. Could just be a marking to number it. So it's easier to keep track of it in terms of logistics. Similar to how it's hard to find hats, original hats in the right size, this backpack is also rather small. And even though I have extended it quite a bit, um, it still kind of digs in to the shoulders. And this bit right here, is not particularly nice that when that digs in here on the front. Um, it does clip on, kind of hard to see, it does clip on with these onto the ammunition belt. It's kind of hard to show that right now. the bit you've all been waiting for, the bread bag. Very similar to the German one, although, I mean, how many different ways can you make a bread bag? Difference is, this one is slung over the shoulder. I probably should take a hat off for that. So it's slung over the shoulder like that, compared to the German, which is uh, fastened in the belt, sort of down below. It does have uh, a loop here, which you can put your belt through. Um, this one, just like the other items, is original. So we got a marking there. It's Infantry Regiment number 19. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to match these, as you can tell. I-12, I-16. I-19. This one is from 1917, so it's an original one. Interesting story behind this one is when I started to collect for this uniform, I saw this one 
on an online auction site. And I was like, wow, an original bread bag. That must be really rare. And I ended up in a bidding war with another bidder. And I think I came close to paying like $100 for it. Not like, I barely 24 hours later, I was on a army surplus store online looking. And I believe they had like a Black Friday, I think, yeah, I think it was like Black Friday sale. So it was, um, a certain amount of items were 10 or 5% off. And they were selling these for $10 each with an added on then a 10% discount. For what I bought this one for, I could have bought 10 of these. Um, and all of those were also like um, original and from around the time period of around the First World War. So that stung a little bit. That definitely stung a little bit. <laughs> Well, the Swedish soldier keep his ammo. I hinted earlier on the um, ammo packs that I was carrying on me, and this is where the Swedish soldier was carrying his pack across or his ammo across his stomach, and then to the side here we've got the bayonet as well. Uh, all of these items are original except for this buckle. They are usually lost, and so I managed to get one, um, a reproduction one, that I fastened here. I believe these were used in some Star Wars movie or something, so I know that these have other uses, but they're pretty cheap and easy to come by in Sweden. And in this case, I've actually recently been able to acquire these uh, dummy rounds for the Swedish uh, main army rifle at the time, the Mauser M1996, uh, the M96, the Mauser M96, uh, yeah. So I've got these, we've got that uh, stripper clip, and then you've got these dummy rounds to kind of symbolize the, uh, the uh, actual rounds. With now everything kind of shown in detail, I thought I'd go ahead and put everything on. I haven't gone over in super detail showing the uniform, but I thought that would probably be shown right now. And uh, the boots. Now the boots are later period because it's kind of hard to find. Uh, one, Swedish World War One boots. So these are later uh, Swedish Army boots, so closer to World War Two instead. Uh, original though, but probably post-war, just post-World War Two. So they're not really that interesting. But I thought I'd go ahead and show you putting on the gear. And then, uh, yeah, I think we'll be done. So let's start by doing that, shall we? Vi ska skott på fredagsdamm Vi ska tack, tack, tack Ut i virvelsrum 
man slagt vilken makt i sången just idag. Vi vi sjunger för flickorna som söder i vatt, för att vinka åt pojkarna som draga åt land. Trotsig vän, 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 vi kan röja lite vän, utan längtan kommer han igen. Right, and so with that, we're all kitted out and uh, ready to go. As this was recorded during Easter, I'll say Happy Easter to you all, and as always, hopefully you guys enjoy this one, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.